Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Walden with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Today's player is former Stanford tight end Austin Hooper, the draft pick of the Atlanta Falcons. And I want to profile him because he was my top rookie tight end in the RSP this year. And I think that he has a chance to be an exception to the rule when it comes to rookie tight ends and how they produce right out the gate. And I think the reason that's, that he can be an exception is how he plays the ball in the air and his initial quickness after the catch combined with the fact that he's a good blocker. Now we're not we're going to look at his blocking skills today. We're just going to look at about four plays of Hoopers that give you an idea of what he can do for the Atlanta Falcons immediately once he gets in the camp after final exams and the rule that's been put in place by the NFL concerning Stanford's um, academic system that prevented him from being in OTAs. So let's get started. The first play, we're going to see Hooper at the top of the screen that's against Purdue. And you're going to see him work up the field and make the catch between two players. And just watch how he turns on this back shoulder fade. This is a very wide receiver-like move for a player who is deceptively large when you look at really look at his height and weight. But watch him get his hands up there, turn through. And this is nice because even though he's turning outside, the ball is a little bit further behind him than he anticipated. He's able to get his hands away from his body while he's turning, still reach back behind his momentum to make this grab, and then be able to turn his shoulders away from the defender who is hanging on him, get one foot in, almost get the second one in there. So you're seeing evidence of good boundary awareness that should only get better, takes the hit, comes down with the football. Let's look at this next play. You're going to see Hooper coming off in the middle of the field here on the bottom right. He's got a linebacker who's going to at least try to make some contact with him. He gets his arm up a little bit with a rip, comes across the field, and again, high pointing the ball. And being able to extend fully like this, this is something that separates him from a, from a former Stanford tight end who was drafted, I think, a little bit higher and is a little bit more beloved by um, a lot of fans for his potential, and that's Zach Ertz. I think that Hooper is a better receiver in traffic and in tight coverage than Ertz. And you can see here, when I would see Ertz go up for the ball like this, when he got hit, he often didn't come down with it. On this play, he takes the hit in the chest and slam down to the ground. He still has the ball. We're going to see it another time. even dragged a little bit by that trailing defender doesn't distract him at all he's able to go up make the adjustment we're gonna watch that one more time because I think that's interesting to note is that when he comes off the ball here he's 84 in this part on the top he gets behind he's pulled at the arm a little bit doesn't distract him he's looking at the ball all the way He's still able to get nice position, go up and reach for it, knowing that there's a safety behind him, possibly. Even though the safety isn't in the area, once he does make the catch, it's still a nice play. He makes that, he makes a little bit of a juggle there, but he's able to make that catch despite the fact that he's taking contact while he's juggling the ball. So let's look at that one more time there. Let's see if we can see it. Okay, we'll see it from the same. Gets hit here, ball bobbles a little bit, but he's able to maintain control. That's excellent concentration. So now we're going to see this third play. This is one that I've profiled in the past with Kevin Hogan in an RSP boiler room, but we'll look at it again from the point of view of Hooper, who is down at, as the outside twin receiver. He's going to work off a jam with a rip move, and then he's going to face two defenders in the intermediate side of the field on a sail route, go up between them, and make the catch, taking a hit in the process. Nice work there. Looking at it one more time here from the other angle, looking at Hooper facing the camera. Saw that little bit of a rip move. We're going to look at it one more time. It's a nice violent rip, and he turns the shoulder away. He gets the arm up fast. That gets him past the defender immediately. 
And then look at him here. Now the arms are a little bit low at this stage of the game, but he's not tipping off the rival of the ball, which is important because he's got a defender trailing and, and really watching for when Hooper is going to go up for it. And once he does, he's got a defender hanging off him, pulling at the ball. He's got another one in his face. He's still able to pull this thing down. That's strength and great concentration because look at where the, the hand by number eight comes in to sweep in at the ball. Hooper's still able to pull it in really with one arm and then just cover over the top of the point with the other and make that play. That's a beautiful play by Hooper. You've seen three plays where either he's taken contact, gone up for the ball above the rim and made the play, showed some boundary awareness. Um, you've seen some ability to work off physical coverage. These are really nice plays. We're going to look at one more here from, from Hooper. If I can find it here in a minute. Let's see. Sorry about that, folks. I thought I had this one ready, but I didn't. So let's look at one more time. We're going to see Hooper at the top of the screen. He's going to come over on a, on a short end, make this catch, look at the hands away from his body, looking the ball in. And I like this very quick move to the, really just to spin away from the defender over top. It's a nice play. He knows where the defender is, and that's a quick first step for a big guy. That's one of the things I like about him. So I think he's a pretty quick player, and he's only going to get more athletic because he's a young guy still growing into this body. I mean, he almost, his acceleration is good enough that he's behind this number three once he gets into the open field. I mean, he doesn't separate completely from him, but he forces number three into trail position pretty quickly here and still able to generate about 10 yards after the catch. So we're going to look at it one more time. Makes that catch. Really nice stuff. So when I think of Austin Hooper, I think that the Atlanta Falcons are going to be able to use him split outside in the slot. He can block, so they're going to be able to use him off the line of scrimmage. And I think he's going to do a really good job for them in the red zone because, you know, Mohamed Sanu, he's a nice player. I think he can make plays in tight coverage and win jump ball opportunities. But to have three players who are capable of doing that, and Julio Jones, Sanu, and now Hooper, I think Hooper's going to see the benefit of some nice coverage mismatches early on. If he can get into camp and show that he's not going to make a lot of errors early on, I think that his ability to play physical football, make the catch at you know difficult points, and have a, a veteran quarterback who's going to trust him early and give him a chance, I like what I see. So that's my book on Austin Hooper. For more RSP Boiler Rooms, check out my YouTube channel, The RSP Film Room, or my blog at www.mattwaldmanrsp.com. Thanks again, and see you later.